When the Berlin Wall fell, Francis Fukuyama said it was the end of history. Uh, but of course it wasn't. Uh, we face new and different threats in the 21st century from uh, Russia, which has adopted a much more aggressive stance from uh, Islamist uh, extremists. And we also face not a threat, but a, a challenge from citizens of our own countries who are, have become war weary. They're uh, asking more questions about uh, defense and security policy. And they want to know that uh, what's done in their name by the governments of our countries, allied countries, uh, is uh, uh, both effective and necessary and cost effective. One of the things we as an assembly have done is to uh, press for NATO to publish its accounts and to justify more to the public of our countries what they're doing, why it's done, and what the benefits are in terms of preserving the rights and freedoms which we uh, uh, subscribe to. Uh, what, is, what is being done and, and, and how effectively it's being done. After the banking crisis, there's been huge pressure on uh, public spending in all allied uh, countries. Uh, and because we have a more questioning public, we have to make the case to the public about why defence uh, spending is necessary. We face uh, new challenges from, uh, from Russia, of course, uh, in Ukraine and Georgia, from uh, Islamist uh, extremists. And uh, we need to quantify to the public what these risks are and how defence spending can help to protect the uh, human rights and rule of law, the things that really matter to us. Uh, that's a challenge, uh, and it's a challenge which our parliamentary assembly and our national parliaments have got a, a big role uh, to play, uh, acting as a, a communication belt between uh, citizens of our countries and the governments of our countries. The transatlantic link, the partnership we have between Canada and the United States and European countries is absolutely central to security on both sides of the Atlantic. We in Europe don't spend enough on defence ourselves. Uh, we need the Americans to do some of the heavy lifting on our behalf. Maybe it shouldn't be like that, but it is like that. Uh, and the Americans uh, may not think we're the perfect allies when it comes to defence spending. They keep telling us we have responsibility to do more than we're currently doing. Uh, but we're the best allies they've got. Uh, when it came to uh, American-led operations in Afghanistan, or that wasn't a NATO operation in Iraq, 90% of the non-American troops who were deployed and 90% of the casualties that were taken, non-American casualties, came from other alliance countries. So if America wants, for foreign policy reasons, to uh, engage with allies rather than on its own, then it's its allies in NATO that it turns to time and time again, and it's us, the allies, who respond to that call and make commitments and are willing to put uh, soldiers, young men and women from our countries in harm's way in order to defend the freedoms which are absolutely essential to our countries on both sides of the Atlantic. This alliance, which has um, served us well through the Cold War, is still needed because America doesn't want to act unilaterally. It needs partners for its, its foreign and security policy. Uh, and we in Europe, uh, frankly, because we don't spend enough on defence ourselves, uh, need uh, the muscle, the might, the defence spending which the United States brings. Now we need to change that to become, uh, to, to share the burden better, but uh, we will still need the United States because we and they and Canada and North America too share the same values of democracy and the rule of law and freedom. Uh, and those values you need to protect with diplomacy and with economic policy, but you also, as a last um, resort, need to have military might to back up those freedoms which we enjoy and which we value so much.